program. So greetings. This is uh, the Body of Christ Christian Ministries at Daystar Church Campus. I am Pastor Elliot, if you so choose to call me that, or if I follow the call that God has put on my life, it would be Apostle. But uh, today I'm just a minister, just trying to share the word with you. Um, we endeavor on Thursdays to get into the word, to explore and have fun with it and to make it practical. Um, so for those of you who are joining us or who have joined us, I thank you for being a part. And for those of you who may listen to it later, I thank you for taking the time out to hear God's word. Uh, before I get started, I'm going to pray and let God do what he does in teaching this message. Uh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you and praise you for your word. I thank you and praise you for the call and the mandate that you placed on my life to share the uncompromising word of God, to teach words line upon line and precept upon precept. Father, I just ask that I decrease and you increase in me, that you think through my mind and speak through my mouth, that those things that would be considered mysteries you make clear, so that this word is manifest and it is made available to your people to live their lives better. We just give you the praise, glory, and honor for all that you're doing. Uh, this isn't a religion. This is a relationship. And learning about what your word really means so that we can apply it daily is what we strive for. So once again, we thank you and praise you for all that you've done and continue to do in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So I have been in prior weeks talking about uh, the fruit of the spirit. I've been in Galatians 5. And today I'm actually going to go through the fruits of the spirit and the works of the flesh. And I'm going to try to show a little bit of a comparison. Um, just from the standpoint of um, striving to live our lives the right way. And what we should be striving for, and definitely what we what we should be uh, excluding from our lives, uh, so that we can truly um, reflect the character of Christ. And the fruit of the Spirit are the characteristics that, if we search the Word out and we look at the life of Jesus Christ, we can identify all of these characteristics in Him. And it is what we should be striving for as uh, people developing a relationship with him. This is what people should see of us uh, as a reflection of him to draw them. So uh, that's why I'm talking about it. Uh, this is not meant to be a, a condemning type of a word or message. This is actually just exploratory. We're just getting into the word and talking about some things. And I invite you. Uh, if you listen to this message on a social media platform, I encourage you to, to send questions and to ask things uh, for clarification. Um, that is how I stay on top of and make sure that I am correct in everything that I say and I do. Um, so I encourage you to do that. Um, if you want to follow me in your Bible, you're going to turn to Galatians chapter 5. You're going to drop down to about verse 16. That's where I'll start. This is kind of where it gets into talking about uh, the works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit in this comparative. And I'm going to read it all the way through and then we're going to talk about the individual characteristics. Here's a here's a fun fact. Most people say that there's nine fruit of the spirit and 17 listed uh, works of the flesh. Um uh, I'm going to challenge you to say that there is more than nine fruit of the spirit because in Ephesians five, um, mm -hmm. there are three more fruits of the spirit listed. Uh, and we can get into a debate later on about whether you consider them part of the fruit of the spirit or the characteristics of God or not. Um, but I'll talk about those a little bit today as well. So let me read. It says, and this is in the King James version. It says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not lust, uh, not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another, 
so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. So the whole point of dealing with the fruit of the Spirit, that's verse 16 through 18. The whole point of dealing with the fruit of the Spirit is so that you don't continue to walk after the flesh, but you start to walk in the Spirit. And if you have not been in the Spirit, so to speak, or following a life uh, that you would like to pattern after Christ, um, in a relationship with him or developing a relationship with him. If all you've done your entire life is, is work to please your flesh and live a good life, uh, free of pain and suffering and challenges. And you just want to get by, and be the best person that you are. Um, then you're self motivated. And, and that is the root of what the flesh deals with. Anything that's pleasing to self is what it capitalizes on. There is a shift to the spirit, which is selfless, meaning now you don't put yourself as the top priority. You put someone else as the top priority and you change your life. And you can't just do that automatically at a snap of your fingers just because you made a confession to follow Christ. Now you got to learn how to walk that walk. So the fruit of the spirit is designed to show you these are the things that that are a demonstration of Christ's character and the list of the works of the flesh. These are a manifestation of the things that go to please you and work against walking that walk, that spiritual walk with Christ. So verse 19 says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like of which I tell you before, as I've told you in past times, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now that last part is important. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God does not mean you're not going to heaven. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God is dealing with the kingdom of God on earth and his promises. So shall not inherit the kingdom of God and I would venture to say those who are doing these things have not confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So they're not going to heaven. But once again, if you have confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you're struggling with the characteristics of God throughout your life, that just means that. These things are holding you back from obtaining the promises on earth, but it's not precluding you from getting to heaven. That's kind of a whole different story, but I want to kind of make that point clear just so we have that understanding. Um, and people who who teach uh, specifically what it takes to get to heaven and, and what it takes and, and what you do to, to go to hell are really focused on the wrong thing. The word simply says, judge not least you be judged. That does not mean don't evaluate the character of a person uh, in reference to protecting yourself and identifying who someone is. But we are not we don't have the capacity to stand in the judgment seat and condemn anybody to hell. So if you don't see these fruit of the spirit in someone, that's not your place to tell them that they're going to hell. It's not your place to judge them. This is just your landmark to know uh, and have evidence by behavior that somebody truly is striving, as they say, to live a life that would be pleasing to Christ. And they're doing it by demonstrating his character. Once again, we don't know this starting off. So um, once we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we've we've lived 10, 20, 30, 40 years in this world where our only outlook is to look out for ourselves. 
So we're not equipped to operate from a selfless standpoint at that point. We have to learn through his word what we need to do so that we can live that truly selfless life and find out what is pleasing to him. So that's what this is all about. So I wrote out a list of the things that are listed as the works of the flesh. And I came up with a list of 17, but at the end of the list, it says, and such like, meaning there are so many more things that can be listed that is not in this list. So this isn't an all-inclusive list, but this does list some of the main things that are uh, classic characteristics that show that you need some work. Um, and we can start with, um, well, before I do that, I want to get into the fruit of the spirit, which is, um, it says verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such. There is no law. Now, the last part of that is important. Against such, there is no law. So what that's dealing with, the, the point that they're making with there is no law, meaning that there can be no judgment against someone who exhibits these characteristics. So if you are operating in the spirit of love, joy, peace, you're patient when you're going through things. You have a gentleness about you. Um, there is goodness in you and you demonstrate faith. You're meek. Um, and you dem demonstrate temperance, then there is nothing that you're doing in operating in those characteristics that someone can disparage your name or, or give a bad report about you or hold you in judgment because those characteristics, there's nobody that can have a negative report about you if that's what you're doing. That's what that means. You basically taken away all of the ammunition for somebody to judge you if that's the way you're living. But we know that they'll still find something and it probably will be a lie. So along with that, in Ephesians five, it deals with three more characteristics. And uh, I was exploring this a little bit earlier today. Um I have a cousin that's an apostle out of Alabama, and we were having a discussion about this. Um, and he brought it to my attention to look into it a little bit closer. But it's Ephesians starting at uh, Ephesians 5, starting at verse 8. And it says, For ye are sometimes darkness, but now ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So the only thing that is listed in the original fruit of the spirit that I read to you and in this, these three things is goodness. But the goodness here deals with a different thing than the goodness in the original list deals with. That's why they're listed as separate. So the beauty in this, as we endeavor in the word, I've never heard anybody teach that there was actually more than just that nine fruit of the spirit. But I'm here to tell you after reading this, there is three more characteristics as well. And the characteristics um, are important. Goodness, righteousness and truth. Um, something that we should all strive for. And it goes on to say in verse 10 proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So it's making a clear distinction between light and darkness, just like in, in uh, Galatians five and is making a, a, a clear um, indication that these are characteristics of someone that's demonstrating the fruit of the spirit. Now to talk about the fruit of the spirit. Some people think that the fruit of the spirit is one, all characteristics that represent one fruit. I'm of the mindset to believe that 
all of these characteristics are fruit. Because if I tell you to go into the refrigerator and grab some fruit, and you ask me what type of fruit do I have, I can tell you I have grapes, bananas, oranges, apples, pears. Just go in and get some fruit. I don't put an S on the end of fruit to be plural. Fruit is singular and plural in its regular form. So sometimes it's hard to think. We, we just think this is an all-inclusive group that all of these things represent someone who is in Christ when in actuality, none of us are perfect. So these are the characteristics that we should strive from. These are the characteristics, if we look at Christ's life, that we can see that he reflected. And if he was able to reflect those things, then as we work to gain a better relationship with him, these are the characteristics that we should look to reflect also. So hopefully, hopefully I made that simple and clear uh, so that there's no confusion. Um, and once again, these are not all inclusive lists, but these are a guidepost. These are some things that we can look at as ways to move and work towards uh, a strong relationship with Christ and know within ourselves that we're doing some things that we, that would be pleasing to him. It would be bad if we started to walk this walk with Christ and we had nothing that we knew would be pleasing to him. And so we would just go and be doing things, hoping that it would please him. And he's not like that. He would tell us what would please him and what we should strive for. Not that he expects us to be perfect in it, but perfection is a path that we walk, not a place that we end up. So those are some words of encouragement for you as we go through this. So if I'm dealing with, if I'm looking at the works of the flesh the key point to the works of the flesh is that there are works. There are things that we do. So if I'm an adulterer, I'm probably um, sleeping with someone else's spouse. If I'm fornicating, I'm probably having sex outside of the covenant of marriage. If I'm dealing in uncleanness, that means that I'm not sanctifying my body unto Christ and I'm not sanctifying in the things that I'm doing. Um, and I'll actually read the, the definition. It says impurity, the quality, physical or morally, which means that I'm morally corrupt as well. That also represents uncleanness. So there's a physical side and then there is a moral side as well. In reference to uncleanness, meaning I'm not doing what would be considered right. Lewdness, uh, or let's say lasciviousness. Lasciviousness deals with um, uh, uncertain derivation, but apparently meaning uh, contentment, uh, litigiousness. Um, so, Lasciviousness is basically, um, is, is basically having a desire for what other people have. So you're not content with what you have, um, and you desire that wantonness. You want something that somebody else has from an envying standpoint. Idolatry. Um, idolatry is just using imagery for your worship and not worshiping the true and living God. So anything that you worship, whether it's money, whether it's a cross, uh, whether it's a statue, whatever it is, it, it really basically is anything that you use as a form of worship above God. Witchcraft. Witchcraft is basically sorcery, mysticism, magic. Um, back in the day, um, it used to deal with medication uh, and used to mean pharmacy. So um, if you think of it in terms of that, it's the, the thought process that you have the ability to through mysticism or your own power and strength 
to create potions and solutions for yourself um, through through worship and uh, rituals that you create to a God of to, to something other than the true and living God. Hatred, hatred is pretty straightforward. It's hostility against other people. It's it's enmity uh, against them. Uh, it's a reason for opposition. So you find a reason if you if you're angry or if you're hostile towards someone uh, or if you hate them, you're finding a reason to be mad at them. It's it's not just you're mad. It's you're finding a reason, meaning they don't necessarily have to be giving you a reason. You just decide that you want to be uh, upset with them. And along those same lines, if you deal with variants, variance is quarreling or fighting, wrangling. It's a debate. Uh, so uh, a variance variance is is debating or arguing or creating that that displease uh, displeasure. Uh, emulations, emulations. Um, man. It, it deals with like jealousy of of someone, like jealousy of a husband, or uh, jealousy of God, or an enemy, like jealousy of someone that makes them your enemy. Um, it is jealous zeal, and uh, and a lot of it is. Uh, indignation it's like disdain or or a negative feeling towards them it, it, it doesn't even have to be founded in something that's true wrath man wrath is a fierceness a fierce indignation um so a lot of these things are following the same line it's just a different way to demonstrate anger um strife so you got wrath emulations variance hatred all of these things are different parts of demonstrating displeasure with people that come out in arguments, fights, um, contention. Uh, you know, when people are finding a way to be mad at you, when they're plotting against you, all of that come. All of these things come out of that same spirit, along with strife, um, which is friction between two people seditions seditions deals with a uh, disunion division between people or groups so not only are you, do you separate yourself you create separation or division in groups heresies uh, heresies is also dealing with disunion um, it really is a choice that's a choice to separate or a choice to, to part ways, to to make yourself a part of something um, specific that separates you from everything else, like joining a sect or a group. Envying. That is... It's similar. It's just ill will. Jealousy, um, detraction, um envying all along that same lines, it is really prompted by envy. Um, so when you, when you are jealous or when you don't have an appreciation for what someone else has done or who someone else is, um, you think that that should be you, uh, and, and you're hating on them, you're envying. Uh, I think murders is pretty straightforward. Um, it's being slain or slaughtered. It is really, it's, it's really the mindset that you want to destroy someone or someone's life. That's what murder is. It's destroying someone's life. Then you deal with drunkenness. And this is a fun one because people always want to debate whether or not it's okay to drink alcohol. 
and an indication of which way you're leaning deals with this spirit right here, drunkenness. Drunkenness is not sloppy drunk. Drunkenness deals with intoxication. If you look at intoxication, that deals with altering your mind state, being in a position to not fully be able to uh, not be a hundred, have a hundred percent of your faculties. Drunkenness can come from taking drugs. It can come from um, drinking alcohol. It can come from anything that alters your mind state to the point where you are not a hundred percent you and able to make the decisions necessary with a sound mind. Drunkenness deals with not being able to make sound decisions because your mind state is altered. Uh, revelings. It's carousing and rioting, basically causing a lot of trouble. Uh, and such the like. So, when we look at this list of the works of the flesh, <clears throat> think about what the world tells us that we can and what we can't do and what's acceptable and not acceptable. And when you look at this list, you can walk down the list and, and almost everything that the world is trying to gravitate to or what what media is publicizing and what the news is reporting on is everything in this list. Everything that's put in front of us on a regular basis is shown to us as behavior of people, good, well, bad mostly, especially in the news, deals with all of these things in the list of the works of the flesh. And if every day, the majority of the time that I spend on this earth, what's being put in front of me is the works of the flesh, and people are debating and trying to justify their behavior because they want or deal with selfish desires and they want to justify what they're doing to be in right standing. And they're not trying to be in right standing with God. They're really trying to be in right standing with themselves and with whoever they can get to agree with them. And then they believe that if they get enough people to agree, that in some way they're going to convince God to, that it's okay. In actuality, that's not what's going to happen. But in this world, that's what we look at when we talk about dating. And if I was to say to you that if you're living with someone that you're not married to, that's called shacking. And if you're sleeping with them, that's called fornication. And I tell you that according to the Bible, that's not right. You'll find a group of people to say, well, in this day and age, at this time, it's okay because it's acceptable by everybody. And, you know, you just, you're being, uh, old fogey and you know you don't understand the times and all of that well i don't have to understand these times i can just go back and look at sodom and gomorrah when the same stuff was going on and see what what, what god did to them he destroyed them same sex marriages and uh having sex with the same sex and you know just carousing and all of, everything that this world uh is emphasizing I could just look in the Bible and find it in there and say, okay, what did God do concerning that? Oh, he destroyed it. Okay, well, I don't want to be in that group, so I'm not going to endorse that. So we've talked about the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh primarily deal with things that are pleasing to ourselves. Things that we can get gratification or joy out of or that put us in a position of power in our own minds, authority in our own minds, exemplifies ourselves in our own minds and puts other people down. And it says people like that won't inherit the kingdom of God. Now, once again, I said the kingdom of God is not heaven. We shouldn't be striving to live a good life so we can go to heaven. We should be striving to live a good life so that we can draw more brothers and sisters into the body of Christ so that when we do ascend to heaven, that we'll be together. And when Christ comes down to the earth um, to basically wipe away all of the evil and reset this back to the way that he originally designed it, there will be partakers in that as well. So, 
verse 22 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Let's talk about love for a minute because it could be debated that, well, I'm showing you love and my version of love is if I love you, then, you know, I beat, I beat my, my spouse. That that's, that's love to me. If I, if I don't beat her, then that, that means I don't love her. So people don't understand the essence of what love is. The love is the motivation that causes you to act in a way to demonstrate the behavior that you associate with love. So if you have a wrong understanding of how love should be demonstrated, then your manifestation of love is going to not be pleasing to most other people and definitely not going to be right in the sight of God. So when we start to talk about the fruit of the spirit, it's not designed for us to be the judge of whether somebody's demonstrating something or not. It's the characteristics that we look for. But the reason why we have to develop our relationship with Christ is because not only do we need to learn what the characteristics are, we also need to learn how to walk in them properly as well. Joy. Some people find it hard to be joyful or happy. They don't have uh, gladness. Um, they don't have calm delight. They don't have exceeding joy or exceeding happiness. But that's something that we're supposed to have when we're in Christ. Peace. With the way the world is today, it seems like it's hell all around us. But we should have a place of tranquility within us. And that tranquility comes from understanding the purpose and plan that God created us for. And knowing that he's obligated to have us fulfill that purpose. And as long as we align ourselves with what the plan and purpose is that he put out for us, then the end of our story is going to end in victory and success. So when we go through challenges, we still have peace because we know that our life is going to end in success because of who we've aligned ourselves with. Long suffering. Long suffering is just so that when things come up, that we don't get caught up in the moment. But it says long suffering so that no matter how, what the length of time, the challenge that we go through is, that we do it with patience and peace and forbearance and not lose hope, the hope that God said. So long suffering is not a, a punishment sentence for us. He says we should go through long suffering, so that means I should suffer. No, that means when challenges come, I don't lose sight because of the length of the challenge. I should be able to endure something over a period of time and still be able to focus on who God is. That's what it is. It's not a sentence to be punished. All the word says, the, the fruit of the spirit says long suffering. No, that doesn't mean that you have to long suffer. That means sometimes things happen. And God never allows you to be tempted above that which you are able to handle. And so with that and with understanding uh, the purpose of God, the, the purpose of God for your life and that that guarantees you success. You should be able to endure the challenge with fortitude and, and not falter at every turn and lose hope. Gentleness. I think gentleness really deals with specifically um, a moral excellence of character and a kindness and a goodness. Excellence of moral character and your demeanor. So how you go about doing things. Gentleness, goodness, kindness. It's, it's the character. It's how you approach things. It's not being dainty or being a punk it's how you approach so if there's conflict how do i approach conflict do i approach it with aggression or do i approach it in a calm manner with excellence meaning skillfully dealing with the situation and maneuvering around it to avoid conflict and to demonstrate the love of god if necessary defending myself if i have to 
and then goodness, it's really a virtue of benevolence that they're talking about. That's almost like good naturedness. Um, once again, that selflessness that puts other people having an uprightness of heart or the right mindset is what they're talking about. Faith, man. When they say faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, like love, faith is what causes you to act in a way to demonstrate what you believe. Faith is not the action. Faith is what causes you to act. And the act that you act is a demonstration of what you believe. That's a demonstration of your faith. Meekness. Now, <laughs> I just want to say, when they talk about meekness, they talk about gentleness and humility, uh, mildness of character, uh, and that's how Jesus was, but Jesus wasn't no punk. So because you have meekness, that means that you are in control of yourself and you don't fly off the handle when, un, when it's not necessary. But that doesn't mean that you take a mindset to be walked over. And temperance. Temperance is self-control. Um, it's the mastery of oneself. That's knowing so much about who you are that nobody else can define you. Knowing so much about who you are that nobody can define you and nobody can move you. Nobody can goad you into a situation because you know who you are. And the word says, against such things there is no law. So when you demonstrate The spirit of love, the spirit of joy, the spirit of peace, the spirit of long suffering, the spirit of gentleness, the spirit of goodness, the spirit of faith, the spirit of meekness, the spirit of temperance. And when you learn how to, through the word and the understanding of who God says you are and what you're able to do and what he will provide for you, when you do those things, nobody can really have anything negative to say about you. But when you follow after the things of the flesh, the only thing that you're thinking about is how to give yourself an advantage over other people, how to step on and walk over other people to get what it is that you desire. And in the end, you will not get the promises that God made for you on this earth. Now, I talked about three other fruit of the spirit. Goodness in this list deals with an uprightness of heart and an uprightness based on the life that you live. When I go to Ephesians and we talk about those last three characteristics, Ephesians 5 and 8, actually 9, it says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. And righteousness and truth. Goodness in this sense is not the same goodness that was mentioned before. This is kindness and benevolence. Kindness and benevolence. It's the virtue of kindness and benevolence. Um, and the demonstration of, uh, I want to say godliness in goodness. Versus an upright heart dealing with your attitude in an upright life dealing with the, the, the way that your life looks as the others are looking on. The great thing about righteousness is righteousness is justification and justification comes from God. The only way that you can get righteousness is to have confessed him, which is why I believe these are two different lists. And the last thing is the demonstration of truth. Truth in what you say. Truth of character. That's why I think this is its own separate list. Because the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit. Those fruit of the spirit are things that we're learning how to do. Um, as we get into our relationship with God and some of these characteristics we can already have demonstrated, but righteousness you can only get when you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior 
um, goodness, which is that kind of benevolence, um, it's not talking about how other people see you. That's internal and truth as to the way you live. Once again, is something that's beyond just telling the truth. It's it's rightness um, in the demonstration of how how you live on a day to day basis. I think that it's a higher level or a higher caliber of character that as you mature in your relationship with God, um, you'll demonstrate. And it comes after the confession of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The other characteristics you can demonstrate at any point in time, but these last three are definitely an indication after you've confessed your life to Jesus Christ because that's the only way that we can truly obtain righteousness. So my prayer is that through all of this dialogue that you have a desire to search out more about the fruit of the spirit, that this is enough to whet your appetite and to get you started, that you've learned a few things, doesn't deal with judgment, not judging yourself, not living up to the fruit of the spirit. That's something that we should be striving for through our relationship with Christ on a day to day basis. But the things that are listed in the works of the flesh, those are things that we should be trying to separate ourselves from as we move on in our life and in our walk with God. With that being said, this is Pastor D.C. Elliott of the Body of Christ Christian Ministries. I pray that this ministry was a blessing to you. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask questions on social media platforms, and I'll be more than happy to have a conversation or to answer your questions. With that being said, God bless. I'm out.